Today is Wednesday, September 11, 2024, 821 a.m., important anniversary. Don't want to forget those who lost their lives back in 2001. I remember where I was, certainly, at that time, playing some golf in North Carolina. My wife was in med school at Boston. I met her at that point, but anyway, um, just thinking about that this morning. So the levels we have on the board, what do they mean today? So currently, the in the pre-market, they are have been in and below this range between these two dashed levels here, dashed lines. And I still maintain that the likely scenario is them to go lower today if they don't get above some important resistance areas and close hourly candles above it. This 551.90 is kind of the line in the sand. Like that would be look bullish if they can get above this or start to look bullish. This 550.20, not sure I would trade it necessarily. It's sort of a reference level for me. It could be important, um, not a calculated level per se, but I would be willing to go short in this area. And we'll see what happens at the 8.30 a.m. CPI data release. Happens in a few minutes. That could set the tone, of course. And uh, and just want to point out that I, don't, I can envision this, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but what I'd like to see is maybe me going short early on and then just writing this thing down even if they you know, bounce at these levels, maybe I could have a multi-contract position that would run this thing farther down and uh, pull more points in a trailer or something. So we'll see. I'll come back to this chart after the market closes to talk about any trades taken in the E-minis based off the levels here in the SPY. Catch you on the other side. We are back. It's 8 p.m. And what do we have? So they went down as suspected or as anticipated, but they... They went up for most of the day for, what is this, 150 S&P points or so from the low to high. So we're going to talk about this in a couple of different ways. Now, having these levels is a good you know, reference. It's kind of a good baseline to take trades if the market is behaving the way it should when it comes into a level. But since these rules that I keep talking about may be somewhat mysterious or ambiguous, I'm just going to treat every single level like you traded it without knowing the nuances. So to begin with, as I mentioned in last night's video and this morning, uh, I wanted to be on the short side. I anticipated them to go down and really break this low here, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And so you can look at the video. I'm going to link it up here, probably link it after this, this video today. I'll go ahead and come full circle and after this video talk about perhaps why you could have known this was actually the bottom. They weren't going to go farther. I fully anticipated them to break this low and keep going lower. And you'll see the trade that I took. I took one trade and got a ton of points out of it, but... Anyway, back to playing by the rules. So this first trade here at 545.62 would have been the first one you would have considered taking because here they came and hit it pretty close. Uh, I mean, if you adjusted this to your five cent buffer, they would have hit it here a few minutes before. This is essentially the trade right before the time that I like to take trades, which is after 15 minutes or so, so 945 in the Eastern time zone. So this is really a no trade. I wouldn't trust this level after watching that happen. Could have, you could have taken earlier if you wanted. This would have been a, a nice little base hit if you had taken it the first time they came into this at 941. But playing by the rules and not triggered because of a near miss, that was the trade they gave it to you. So I'm not going to trust it the second time around for a long trade. Sure enough, they bounced right through it. Here, when they got to 543, there's really no reason you wouldn't have taken this because the expectation is there's going to be a bounce. There wasn't enough consolidation. There wasn't a near miss. And as much as it pains me to do this, I'm treating this objectively. So I'm going to say, okay, say you took this trade for a long position. Well, you would have had 18 points before you fumbled and reversed this thing and just got a base on the reversal. They went farther than a base, but I'm just treating every single level the same. That way the log makes sense in the long term, um, which you'll see in a minute. And then they kind of messed around with this. There's no um, recycle in this because they came up close. This was a near miss. There's your recycle trade, so you're not going to take it again. And sure enough, that was a smart move. So while you didn't get this, you wouldn't have gotten in trouble by taking it here. Now we're at this level that didn't give the trade the first time uh, because of the near miss. Do you want to take this for a recycle? Yes, sure, why not? But this was another 11-point fumble if you went short here and then a base on the recycle as you reversed somewhere up here. And then you would have had a base. Okay, also this, this zone here. So here's how I would look at this if I were trading this. Plus, there are several reasons that you would have had a feeling that, and I'm going to show, I'll show them to you later, you would have had a pretty good clue that this down move was kind of off the table when they gave some signals that the bulls were trying to fight back and push this thing back up. And sure enough, they did. So when you get, got to here, so do you want to take this for another short trade? Because here's your short trade right here. 
they, they were in this zone. I'm going to show you the pre-market because I actually took a trade before the market opened in the morning and I wrote this thing down. I don't normally do this, but it just felt right. I was that confident with being on the short side early in the morning, like I said this morning in the morning video. But anyway, so I would you don't touch this anymore. This is zone here. It had already been traded on the short side. So just let it go. But 550.20, that is a base hit right here. Give this some few minutes to play out. That's a base hit. So there's one. You got another base hit at 551.90. And then this last level of 554.56 would not have been triggered because it hit right before the closing bell. I'm not going to take a trade there. And as you can tell, it wouldn't have worked anyway. So all that back and forth and, you know, arguably uh, difficult, frustrating way to trade the entire day would have ended you in the red. And I'll show, it, I'll show you what that looks like on the log. But first, let's take a look at the one trade that I took early in the morning. So after I made the video in the morning, I saw them coming back up in here. This is the pre-market activity here in the SPY. Same thing for the, the uh, futures. Saw them coming back up into this zone. Felt pretty good about being on the short side, like I said. And I sold right in the middle with two contracts. You can see there. And I even put a pending order up here. If they got above this. This is the kind of my line of the sand here. Willing to sell one more. So it would have been three contracts short. And then I got in my car and drove to the office. So all this time here, I, I saw the order going, you know, I could see the, the order notification on my phone and saw that everything was fine. And I got back and you can see me setting, I'm, I, I'm pulling the, I'm setting up at the office. I'm pulling my, my clock down here. This is all at, uh, you'll see 10, 941 or so in the morning. So before the market even opened, I'm in this. So I fully intend this thing to go a lot lower. Like I said, last night, when we looked at the four hour, the three hour, the two hour charts. So what I did when I got set up, I thought, well, if they get below this level, I'm not planning on taking any bounces here, they're going to probably fall farther. So I'll just take one off right down here somewhere. There's the first contract out, 1700 and I'm trailing this with like a massive trailer, 30 points or something like that. And let's just watch this thing go. And you can see what time it is, 9.51, 9.52 in the morning. And I'm not planning on taking this trade either. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to trade it for a long trade. I'm just going to hope that they have enough energy to keep going lower because this was well, below this was the absolute line of sand. There was no line on the, there was no level on the board from this morning, but I'll show you on other charts later how you could have anticipated that they did find a bottom and they were on their way back up. But at this point, I had plenty of money in my pocket with this just little two contract short trade here. So I didn't take any more trades for the day. I don't know if you would have, why would I tempt fate at that point? That's kind of my, uh, my approach. So I'll just, I'll just kind of move this head here. So you can see they go down and pull this thing down, pull this thing down. I mean, even on the remaining one contract, I was well over $4,000 for a while. As you can see up here, this is the value of the trade. And I wanted to be out before they got down to 536. To me, that was probably a place that they might find a bottom. It was a little bit uh, optimistic because they found a bottom before that, as you already know this. And so they came back up, stopped me out. I think it was right there at 291250 which gave me a pretty nice profit. There you go, right there. And by the way, I was even in a, in a meeting at some point, so started at 1030. So I got back, I kind of watched this. I mean, like there's, I can't, I can't lose at this point, right? I already pocketed half of the position and the other one, I'm either going to come back and have an extra 6,000 or something. And that's what way it works. So that was, that was it for me. No more trades for the rest of the day. You may recall from the video last night, we looked at this four hour chart and I put this line about right here saying this is near the top of this breakdown candle. They're climbing their way back up. And so the way this would typically play out is it would get toward, toward the top of this, hit some resistance and fall down in a big way. And it could play down lower, like down here somewhere is what I was saying. So there's the level, 550, 70. And the low of this that I was hoping they would get underneath was, I'll just put a line here, was the low of this candle. So let's just put it right here, somewhere in this neighborhood, 539. What is the low? The low is... 539.66, pretty close right there. So if they got, you know, a four hour close below this, this line, this level here, that means they're, this is playing out correctly, this bearish consolidation, or they're going to fall over. But as you can see, that didn't happen. We had two four hour candles. This is the first one and the second one. And clearly they went all the way above. Well, let's drill down. Like if I start, say at a 30 minute chart, then you can start to see some things. So here is the gap right here from this, they filled this gap here. This is the, the close of this back here on September 6th was uh, 540.43, you see that right here? Well, clearly they hit that, oh, and they gave a signal here. That 
on, on some more volume. And also, which I'm not going to show you, let's tell you here, it was a little spike right around here of some institutional participation where you can see that larger lot sizes were being traded. It wasn't tremendous, but there was a little spike right here. They gave this little kind of doji candle. You know, the timing, I don't know, it's decent, I guess, but they're falling hard. They're hitting some the low of this big consolidation and this gap they're filling. And you see this thing happening and, you know, give it another 30 minute or two candles. Let's just go back up to an hour, say, and see what we can see here. Then you start having clues. I guess we need to be on the SPY chart. Uh, what is it? 60 minutes. Start having some clues that at some point they're probably stronger than you may have anticipated. That's what I'm thinking. Now, I wasn't trading at this point, but I'm just showing it to you now. Here's a really good clue on this two-hour chart. They essentially reversed this, this big. This, this was supposed to play out down here somewhere. And all of a sudden, they, they find a low. They come back up, and this is a reversal candle, essentially reversing this down move. So there's no, no really ex, there should be no expectation that they're going to go much farther down. I mean, they could maybe retrace a little bit of this, but you know, this is starting to fail. This whole bearish consolidation is starting to fail on the, on the way back up. And sure enough, they broke the high of this bearish consolidation. And now where are they? They're actually right back into the bottom of this zone. Remember it was the high was 564. The bottom was 554. That's where they stalled out today. And it's not a coincidence that I had a level right above that at 554.50, something like that. And that was the uh, the high. Anyway, just want to show you a few things. Let's go all the way back up to a four-hour chart. Here's the, this is the, this is the way it looked to me as a, nothing changed from yesterday. Bearish consolidation, all this resistance. I wanted them to fall and they did. This is all red at one point, but the next candle, you know, they, I'm just repeating myself here, but the point is, this thing failed and they closed nice four hour candle. This last candle of the day, well above the high of this breakdown candle. So this is kind of off the table for now. It could be a big fake out. We'll see what happens in the overnight session. We'll see what happens tomorrow morning, but just a few things to point out of why you probably could have traded these things with a little bit more scrutiny and understood that they found a bottom. They gave you the signals, the playing by the rules, somewhat uh, confusing perhaps every single level was hit and here's all the reasons that I already talked through of why you would have taken it or not taken it and as much as it pains me um, because I wouldn't have traded this way at all based on what I knew going into it um, but this is what you would have had and my trades were quite a bit different I just basically went short right at this zone and just let it go 46 points on two contracts it was 46 12 50 $4,612.50 before commissions. Not too bad. I'm happy with that trade. I'm curious about those of you who had the levels from this morning. If you uh, trusted or if you trusted being on the short side, I guess that's the question. Did you go short and just kind of ignore the levels or you know not worry about little counter trend bounces? Because on a, on a big trend day, which part of the day was, part of the day was a trend day down, the next more than half of the day was a trend day back up. Would you have known that ahead of time? No, but you see clues in real time developing that kind of give you a feel for what the market's going to do. Anyway, I'm just since I said this morning and last night that I was wanting to be on the short side, I'm just wondering if any of you guys listened to me and did that and got something at least on the first part of the day. I'd be curious to get some feedback on that. I think you could have made some money if you tried. Anyway, that's all I have today. Um, tomorrow should be interesting because they're back up. We're trying to get back up into that zone that range, I should say, not the zone, that if they can get above the range, then they're back at the all-time highs again. Or is this entire thing a big fake out and now they're finally going to go lower again? I don't know. They're kind of in a middle wishy-washy kind of area. And I'll find out tomorrow morning if I can get some more levels dialed in. That should be more precise. Until then, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Catch you in tomorrow's recap video. Have a great day.